Hi everyone, my name is Steve Courage and in this video uh, I want to share with you one particular discovery that changed my life. Right? This happened uh, more than a decade ago I, I, and I hope by sharing that with you it changes your own life as well. <laughs> So it, it happened that when I was growing up, I actually grew up in an environment where everybody was poor. In fact, I, I did not understand what poverty means until maybe I was 12 or 13. Uh, because think about it, if you do not see anybody that has money, there is no way you would think uh, some people are poor. So in the village where I grew up, uh, nobody had money. Uh, I mean, nobody had anything. We were all poor. So there was no reason for me to believe some people are rich, some people are poor. I simply believe that is how life is. And then uh, as I was growing up, uh, wherever I go to my father to ask him for anything, the default response I would get was, where is the money? So, for example, let's say I, I want to pay for something in school or I want to buy anything and I go to my father and I ask him for the money. Uh, he, he would just reply me with something like, where is the money? Uh, or sometimes says, do you think we grow money uh, or we have first money on the tree? And if you hear this consistently enough let's say you hear this for the first 15 years of your life it is so natural for you to believe that oh money is really scarce so by the time i was 16 years there about even though i have started my first business at age of 15 a part of me still believe that money is scarce uh, you know everybody uh, says money is scarce uh, my parents said money is scarce so i have made up my mind that yeah Maybe money is scarce. Until one day when, when I was reading uh, one of the Rich Dad series. So I, I was reading either this, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, or this, uh, Cash Flow Condrant. I cannot remember uh, which of them, but I'm very sure it is one of the uh, Rich Dad series. And I read a statement that goes something like, Money is not scarce because four trillion dollars exchange hand all over the world every day that changed everything for me like all my life i have believed that money is very scarce now i read that four trillion dollars actually exchange hand between people all over the world every 24 hours uh, that changed everything about the way I see money. Because I sit down and thought about it. If $4 trillion actually roam around the world every 24 hours, then you can't tell me that $4 trillion of anything is scarce. I'm sure you are getting my point. If $4 trillion actually walk around the world every 24 hours money is not scarce no if four trillions of anything if four trillions of my cap for example <laughs> is in the world you can't tell me that my cap is scarce if four trillion of my bid actually exist in the world every day you can't tell me that this bid is scarce. If four trillion of this wristwatch actually walk around the world every 24 hours, you can't tell me that this wristwatch is scarce. But Steve, all the money in the world is in the hand of a few people. All the opportunities in the world are in the hand of a few people i mean you should know that yes you are right thomas all of the money in the world are in the hands of a few people but ordinary people like you become rich every day while you are here you know 
looking for excuses uh, to remain poor forever. So let me tell you this. The truth is, most of the money in the world is actually in the hand of a few people. For example, statistically, the 25 richest people in the world have the amount of money that is equal to 3.5 billion poorest people of the world. So think about that. 25 people who are the richest people in the world actually have the amount of money that is equal to what 3.5 billion people who are the poorest people in the world have. And when you think about this for a moment, then you'll be tempted to believe what Thomas believed, which is, oh, all of the money in the world is in the hand of a few people. Now, if you have believed that before now, I want to try and convince you that you are not right. And I'm going to do that by telling you two things. First is, more than 3,000 ordinary human beings all over the world become millionaire every day. Statistically, 1,700 Americans become millionaire every single day. And you can assume that, okay, all over the world, probably more than 3,000 ordinary people become millionaire every single day. Oh, how is that possible? Then you might want to ask, how are these people able to rise above poverty? That takes me to the second thing I want you to understand. And that is change. Change. Look at the globe. Look at the world we have and see how that globe changes and moves every moment. Changes in the world bring in opportunity for new people. People who are not complaining. People who are not making excuses to discover a new way to be rich. And yes, these same changes make people who have money uh, and who are in position of uh, power financially today not to be in that position in the future. And that is why if you make a list of every individual in the world who are millionaire in the last 10 years and you compare that list with the list of people who are millionaire today, what you will discover is some of the people who were rich are no longer rich uh, because life has changed and their businesses are no longer in folk. Then you are going to see a new set of people who were nowhere. I mean, take for example, Mark Zuckerberg was not even among the billionaires in the world, if I'm correct. Today, he's one of the top, you know, richest people. So because life always moves and things always changes people who look for opportunities always find a loophole to you know take some opportunity that will make them rich but listen to this you will never be among those people who are able to figure out opportunity if you believe that money is scarce uh, because uh, naturally People don't tend to look for whatever they think is not available. Take for example, if you come to my home, will you be looking around for snake? Probably not, because you are not expecting snake to be in my home. So if you are in my car and I'm driving you out, will you be looking for scorpion? Of course, you will not be looking for scorpion in my car because you are not expecting it to be there. Uh, why this? Example, my son, so ridiculous. It is so perfect that human beings do not look for whatever they have made up their mind that is not available. So, for example, I come from Africa. Nigeria is my country. An average person in Nigeria, who is my age mate, believe that we are doomed. Uh, there is no opportunity in this country. Uh, I want to run away from Nigeria. Uh, Africa is a terrible place. I want to run away from Africa. That is what almost everybody believes. But when I was growing up, I decided to believe something different. I decided to look at my country as, okay, we have so much problems here. And I have learned from studies that 
people become rich by solving problems. So if my country has so many problems, it simply means I am in one of the best countries in the world. Yeah, because solving problems is the reason why people get rich. Now, I am fortunate to be living in a country that has so many problems. It simply means, yeah, if only I can build my mind, I will be able to solve some problems that will make me rich easier than if I run away from my country. So I decided that I would never run away from my country because of money. And that is why I stay back in Nigeria to learn how people discover opportunities right in the midst of problems and create services, products to solve those problems to make money. And that is why today I, I, I make I make more money than almost everybody I have ever met, you know, one on one in my country. Think about this for a moment. The only difference between myself and 200 million other people who might be in my country is everybody else think there are no opportunities in Africa because they think there are no opportunities in Africa. You don't look for what you believe is not available. That is kind of a, a very simple mathematics. You cannot come to my home and be looking for snake because you don't believe snake is in my home. So, because these people believe there are no opportunities in Africa, they don't look. And some of them who, for whatever reason, try to start a business or two, immediately when they fail, they remind themselves what they initially believe. And that is, I have said it before, uh, this country is difficult. I have said it before, there is no way ordinary man can make it in this country. And that is the end of their attempt. But because I believe there are opportunities in my country, in fact, I believe too many opportunities. I believe there are too many opportunities in Africa. Even when I was failing business world, I was telling myself, okay, the reason why my businesses are failing is probably because there are things I do not understand yet about how to create a product that people want, how to sell products the way people want it, and how to build a business. So I kept on reading, 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 learning, everything you see here. I mean, just to learn and know and understand. And as God we have it, I had my luck. I had my first business breakthrough in the year 2016. Now, what is the essence of this entire video? Money is scarce, if that is what you believe. Uh, money is too much in the world. If you will take the courage to believe that as well, it is just that it is not the issue between truth and lie. It is a uh, conflict between what you decide to believe is like think about white color if i ask you what do you think about white color there is no answer to that question you will only give me answer based on your cultural background for example if you are from western world and i ask you what do you think about black color then you might tell me something like oh that is the color people wear when they are mourning somebody or when they are sad. Yeah, that is your own perspective. Somebody else will tell me, oh, that is the color of power and authority. I mean, we are talking about the same color here. So, if I ask you about white color, you will tell me, oh, if you are from Western countries, you, you tell me, oh, that is the color people wear when they are getting married. That is the color people wear when they are celebrating something. It's a color of purity. It's a color of joy. It's a color of celebration. Yeah, if you are from Western world. But if you are from some Asian country, you are going to tell me exactly opposite of what somebody from Western world just told me. Then you will tell me, oh, white color means a boring thing, a money color or any other ugly things, your culture 
has trained you to believe about white color. So, essentially, black or white color does not have any meaning. The only meaning those colors have are the meanings we give them. And so it is about every other color. You know, because I'm an entrepreneur, I study color psychology a lot. And when you are studying color psychology, you tend to read a lot of things about the meaning of colors. What orange means, what blue means, what yellow means. But those colors never mean the same thing for everybody. They mean what the culture trains us to believe they mean. So let's go back to money. My father believed that money is scarce. My uncles, my brothers and sisters and pretty much everybody else in the village and town where I grew up told me every day that money is scarce. Like maybe 7.9 billion people in the world believe the same thing. Money is very scarce. I, I too will have believed that all my life. And today money will have been scarce for me. But reading either of these books, which I cannot tell you any of them, but I think either of these, I discovered that four trillion dollars actually exchange hands between people all over the world every 24 hours. Then I told myself that it is not possible that something is scarce, yet four trillion pieces of it actually move around the world. So changing the way I look at money means that I started thinking from the perspective of how can I make a tiny percentage out of these four trillion dollars to come to me every day. That is different from looking at money from the perspective of, oh, money is so scarce. Uh, nobody is getting ahead because money is scarce. Or from the perspective of, oh, the rich, the few people who are rich, they have taken all the money. Now, it is only few money that is available for somebody like me. So, the only alternative for me, the only, the only option for me is to look for a job that will just feed me uh, for 40 years, then I will die. Those two perspectives can be the difference between somebody who will die in poverty and somebody who will make more money than he can finish in his lifetime. And I'm making this video to challenge you to choose the second part by believing that money is not scarce. Money becomes scarce because people actually convince themselves to believe that money is scarce. And because they have believed that, they have no passion, they have no interest, they have no desire to actually figure out how to manufacture money. But people who believe that money is too much in the world, these people, even if they are poor, when they are watching this video, because they believe that money is too much in the world, they are going to strive, they are going to desire, and they are going to learn how to make more money than they ever need. So, uh, I don't know, maybe telling you this changes anything in you, but for me, discovering that all around the world, every day changed my life. If it changed your own life, then I will be glad. If you still believe like everybody has that money is scarce, oof, I have wasted the last how many minutes trying to convince you. Uh, but maybe I can try a little bit further by offering you one of my best books. Uh, that is, 13 Secrets School Did Not Teach You About How to Be Rich. You know, I wrote this book in the year 2013 and I was actually selling it because, you know, of course, I wanted to make money from my books. And people were buying the books and I discovered that when people buy this book, they send me mails and give me calls about how the book changed their life, which I wasn't expecting, you know, uh, the testimonial to be that great. Uh, then I started thinking about it. Okay, if I'm selling this book 
and people are, you know, calling me to tell me uh, it changed their life. Why don't I just decide to give it away uh, so that it can reach more people? I can change more lives. And I decided to do that starting from 2015 or 16 thereabouts. So between then and now, that book has been downloaded by more than 300,000 times. Uh, and more people have even got to know about the books, you know, because people who downloaded it share it with their friends and family and stuff like that. So uh, I think it's a pretty good book. Uh, and now I'm giving it away for free just because, you know, uh, if I ask you to pay for it, you might think, oh, maybe this guy wants to get my money. But if I ask you to download it for free, why won't you? So check the description box of this video and download my free business book, 13 Secrets. School did not teach you about how to be rich. If everything I've shared with you make any sense to you, you might want to subscribe to this channel. Uh, I hope to see you uh, in another video.